Hi everyone, welcome to JavaScript Coding Challenge. In today's video, you have to find the below code output and you have four options to select from. And the question is, you are having two async functions. The first function is async1, where it is having a set timeout statement, where it is trying to print console.log of async1. And in the second async function, which is async2, where we are trying to print console.log of start. And then we are finally invoking uh, the first async function using await async1 and then we are actually printing uh, end console.log of end and finally we are uh, invoking the second async function async2 and options are start async1 and end start end and async1 or uh, start and end and the fourth option start and async1 so please try from your end and see what is the output you are getting so before we discuss about the solution of this video so if you are liking this particular JavaScript coding challenge, so please hit the subscribe button and the uh, bell, bell icon so that you will be getting notifications of the upcoming videos and also you can explore the previous videos that we have published. So let's come back to this particular question solution. So we have two async functions, async1 and async2. So before we deep dive into this particular solution, just we have to understand what is an async function, okay, and what is a set timeout. So async function, it's a function which is declared with the async keyword. And the async and await keywords uh, enable asynchronous code, okay? If it is an asynchronous code, it makes it uh, our promise-based behavior to be written in a cleaner style, avoiding the need to explicitly configure promise chains. And it always returns a promise, okay? So async functions always returns a, a promise. And it is, uh, we can call it as a syntactical uh, sugar, okay? Syntactically quoted uh, uh, code that is uh, used in an asynchronous function. So what we have, uh, it behaves as though it is like a synchronous code, okay? And await expressions make promising returning functions behave as though they are synchronous, okay? So that's about async function. Uh, so it is used for, uh, uh, performing a synchronous operation and which is having a promise based behavior and it will be written in a cleaner style using async and await expressions which makes uh, it as uh, it seems like we are uh, actually consuming uh, having an asynchronous code okay so let's discuss about this particular question we are having an async function async one and which is having a set timeout so set timeout is actually a web api global method and uh, this particular uh, method is also having a print console.log of async1 and it is having a timeout of 0 uh, milliseconds. And in the second async function, we are actually calling this async1, but we are having an uh, await keyword, which makes sure that this particular function will be executed and it will be completed or either the promise will be uh, fulfilled or rejected, okay? And we are finally invoking the second function. So what happens uh, when we are actually invoking the second function? So this uh, particular function uh, will be uh, executed and the first line of code will be printed, console.log of start, so start will be printed and then it goes to the await async1. Okay, so in await async1, you can see here it is having a set timeout, right? Set timeout console.log of async1 and hence the set timeout as you know, uh, it will be actually moved into the macro task queue or the callback queue, okay? and it will actually uh, wait for the callback uh, uh, call stack to be empty. So what happens is start and end will be printed and then it will actually move to the set timeout where uh, once the call stack is empty, then the task that will be picked from the callback queue and uh, then this particular console dot of async will async one will be printed. So let's see in action how uh, it is getting uh, executed. And I have this particular script available in the index.html. So I'm already running this index.html. So uh, you can see over here and let me go uh, inspect this and go to sources and put a breakpoint over here and refresh this page. So I'm just refreshing this page. So you can see here, so async2 has been invoked and the first line of code is uh, console.log of start. And once if I go to console.log of start, then what happens is okay. So now you can see here uh, we already have a start printed, but it didn't uh, print this console.log of async one. Okay, and what happened is we are actually now uh, async uh, this console.log of end is being called, 
because this will be actually moved into the uh, call stack uh, callback queue and hence it will wait for the call stack to be empty as soon as this console.log of end is getting printed so now if you go here you can see end has been printed and okay now what happened is like once the call stack is empty then you can see here uh, so it is going into the callback queue and it is trying to fetch whatever is available in the set timeout and hence this console.log of async1 is getting printed and now you can see uh, async1 is getting printed okay so you got right so first it will go to the console.log of start it gets printed and this particular code uh, even though await is uh, there so await make sure that the promise will be either fulfilled or uh, rejected but because of this uh, uh, task precedence right so the normal uh, code will be executed and the callback call stack should be empty so once the call stack is empty then only uh, whatever is available so now you can see the call stack is available over here now if i press f10 so await in async2 is already there okay so now this part is uh, pending so this is not uh, completed so now you can see uh, it goes into the set timeout and once the set timeout is then the call stack is empty again okay so this is the way how it works so just a recap of what we have actually discussed so async function is a function that is declared with the async keyword and async and await keywords enable asynchronous promised beha uh, based behavior functions to behave as they uh, as though they are actually synchronous it helps us to write cleaner code it is a syntactical sugar of uh, quoted uh, code of asynchronous code and it always returns a promise okay and await make sure that the await keyword actually make sure that the promise will be either uh, fulfilled or rejected and in this particular case it didn't print async one in between start and end that is because of the uh, task precedence that's available in javascript the ta set timeout which is a global uh, web api method so that particular uh, uh, method that will be actually going into the macro task queue and hence uh, it will actually wait for the call stack to be empty then only this particular code will be pulled into the call stack and hence the answer in, in our case would be start end and async one and hence option b is the right answer so i hope you got an idea about async functions and set timeout uh, that is being used together so that's it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching.